Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're looking at a Town Hall 11 attack strategy video, and this is something that I think has been out there for a while, but I wanted to go through it, show some attacks, talk about why it's um why it's getting popular now, how it works, maybe a few ways you could defend it even, and go into detail there. Uh, real quick though, just for my viewers, if you're wondering where I've been, it's been a few days. Um, I actually uploaded a video on Wednesday. It's the live action video, the one before this one, uh, talking about the fact that I'm going on vacation. I had to take it down because it had bases shown in it that were uh, from they were going to be used in the CWL war that weekend, so I didn't want to expose their bases. So I took that video down. It's now back up. You can watch it if you haven't already. Uh, so that's why you guys might not have gotten the announcement that I, that I was on vacation. But I'm back today, and uh, very good war right here. Dark Looters and Immoral Thieves. Uh, very close. I'm not going to do a recap. I'm probably just going to do a series of attack strategy videos because... That's kind of what the attacks shaped up to be. I saw a lot of th different things at Town Hall 11, Town Hall 10, and Town Hall 9. Sure, I, so I should have one, you know, attack strategy type video for each Town Hall level uh, throughout the week that you guys should see at one point or another. Uh, so anyway, we're starting today with some Town Hall 11 attacks. This is the Witch Bowler combination, which has worked very well at Town Hall 11. Uh, you can see basically what the idea is. You start off with a, you can use a golem sometimes if there's a number of point defense units uh, in the area. Then you just go from one side to the other. You, you're attacking an entire side of the base. So you drop down uh, a few witches, a few bowlers on each of the corners to create the funnel. You start on the outside and work your way in with your deployment. Some people like Mu here use two healers, uh, one on each of the corners to help the bowlers and the witches stay up long enough to create the funnel. Now you don't need all your troops to go in the middle, that's not even what you're trying to do, because the funneling bowlers and witches tend to go to the outside, which is fine, they can still get some value for you, especially with those healers on them, but the main force should go to the middle, the funnel is created by those troops, and you can see he just storms his way through the base, I think he has two jump spells, which is typically what you do, because the infernos are so spread out, if you don't have two jumps, it's going to be hard to move through the base, use the warden's ability, you know, as needed, and typically these level 3 witches are powerful enough to wreck even a max Town Hall 10 base, and yes, I know this is not a Town Hall 11 v Town Hall 11 strategy, it is a technical a dip attack strategy, but you know, at Town Hall 11, we're not seeing every base be three starred, even by some of the best clans, Dark Looters possibly the best clan in CWL right now, the way they're they're performing, still not every Town Hall 10 is being 3-starred uh, in, in the dip attacks they use. So it's not like this is a spam attack, easy 3-star. Easy you can call it a spam attack. Maybe it takes more luck than skill than for other attacks, but it still takes quite a bit of skill, and it doesn't always work out. Um, it often doesn't work out, so it's important to understand what you have to do and kind of the principles behind it because there are certain things that do, uh, will, they will affect uh, how your attack shapes out and you have to get the, the, the de deployment down uh, in order to be able to do it and have a good chance at a 3-star because it's not as easy as spamming your troops. So that being said, uh, next attack here, I am going to show one fail by the way too just to have that mixed in. Um, but this next attack is by Smiler, and uh, fast forward to the start, he just uses Giants, which I like. You don't always have to bring a Golem, especially on this base, there's not much point defense right on the wall right there. So he can just drop down a Giant on each side, backed up by the Witches and some uh, Bowlers. Now the Skeletons do enough tankings, which is uh, pretty much all he needs to create the funnel. Um, gets, you know, that second layer, you know, I'll pause this real quick, this building right here, this building right here, very important for the bowlers and the witches too, um, both per, uh, behave similarly because they both can target buildings over the walls, so it's important to take those out and kind of work your way in so that all there is for, for the bowlers and the witches to target is kind of the middle of the base, has that first jump to let everything in, then the next jump to kind of make his way into the middle of the base, doesn't have a jump that actually connects the inferno tower, but I think he, you know, figures his queen will step up and eventually his troops will make their way through the wall. So he doesn't have to worry as much about that. Um, everything moving through, a few bowlers up top on the outside along with a witch and a few witches on the bottom, which like I said is completely fine can work out to your benefit even because um, <clears throat> it doesn't leave a shell of the base. It takes the base out evenly, uh, just one straight wave across it rather than going through the base and having defenses flanking all sides of your uh, kill squad. So it works out great. You can see typically what happens is right here, the queen, the king, the warden, and some of the other troops tend to kind of clump up 
it on one side or another of the base, which is fine. And typically it actually works better because everything's in that warden's protected uh, health buff area, um, that little halo around him. So it's even better that way. Still has the king's ability, actually. A few balloons always help, um, just to target specific buildings. And sometimes you'll look at the base and think there's no spots for balloons. But if you bring one or two, I almost guarantee there's going to be a place where a balloon could be used because uh, the air defenses go down in weird ways. And a lot of times the defense will become exposed that you didn't think would be uh, when you were planning out your attack. So uh, that nice balloon right there took out the archer tower and then has t a ton of troops left up either way. Uh, gets that builder's head, which you want to have archers for, but... Oh well, we'll let him off the hook this time. Uh, he does have time to get the 3-star, and he had like two, a 2 minute attack, so had a whole minute left, but um, just in general, you want to have those archers or something. Uh, moving on, we're going to take a look at the failed attack as an example, and we'll look at one of Captain Crunch's uh, 3 stars as well using this strategy. I don't want to just pick on him uh, for having the fail. But it was, you know, a well-executed attack. This base is, you know, max defense, um, difficult for a Town Hall 11 to 3-star. Not incredibly difficult, but it's still, a, a lot of the time, we see failed attacks. And I know that sounds weird because it's a dip attack, but that's just the reality. These attacks are hard to do. I like those bowlers. They're getting the second bounce on the Archer Tower and the Wizard Tower. Good thing to look for when you're deploying them uh, because I think that, Almost get that Archer Tower, and they'll get that Wizard Tower. So uh, look for that second balance when you're deploying your first few bowlers. It can't hurt to overplan these things. But does a pretty good job funneling uh, for the most part. A few bowlers, um, I think like five or six, are going to go up top there. And unfortunately, there's nothing to tank for them. So they go down pretty quickly, which is never good to see when you have a group of bowlers that are pretty much sacrificed like that. Um, they don't get much value on the outside. But he has the main group going in. The Lava Hound goes down relatively quickly, and the pups uh, start to thin out pretty quickly too. Has that jump to connect to the Inferno. Got the Inferno very quickly, which was huge for this attack. Gave it a pretty good chance of a three star. Um, this one, I think, would have gone for a three star. And those few balloons up there were perfect. Like I said, gets that wizard tower. I think it'll get that um, bomb tower. So great value. But it was the task the farm that's actually going to cause him to not get the three star here. And I think for Town Hall 10, that's something to consider. If you think your base is going to be dipped on, which... Pretty much every Town Hall 10 should have that in mind, especially like the mid-level Town Hall 10s, um, possibly some max Town Hall 10s. Lower-level Town Hall 10s, there's not much you can do either way if, an, if a Town Hall 11 is able to attack you. But um, for certain Town Hall 10s, putting that Tesla farm there can be very effective if the attack goes from the opposite side of the base. Maybe not as much for air attacks, you know, maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure for that. But definitely for this strategy, uh, because... Things start to thin out in a group of like three Testas um, amongst all these high HP buildings can be really vicious to witches, to bowlers, even to heroes. So I think that this strategy is so much based on uh, getting, you know, three quarters of the base taken out quickly, then hoping you have enough troops left over for that last 25%. Uh, but by doing this, when all the troops are spread out at the end of the attack, the Teslas can be very effective. And right here, I don't think they take out his troops. They just cost him the time, which was uh, still equally important. Got the witches taken out, which would have gotten the three-star had the Teslas not been there. So uh, good stuff to whoever built that base. That's uh, um, Damaka the Hans or something. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at one more attack here. This is Captain Cr Oops, wrong one. Don't want to show that one. Uh, Captain Crunch uh, coming in here with a, another one of these Witch Bowler attacks. Has uh, one giant, I think he uses it at the beginning. Now this base is a little bit lower level, actually lower level than my base even. So definitely makes it easier to 3 star. That The high level point defense is a huge difference at Town Hall 11 as well as the level 3 Infernos, or at Town Hall 10 rather. So this base is significantly easier to 3 star. Those cannons are only Town Hall 9 level, but still doesn't mean it doesn't take a good attack. It still does take a good plan. And uh, what he does here is drops down uh, the two healers, which we see sometimes. people. Some people do it, some people don't. Some people use giants to tank, some people use healers. Don't think either one makes that big of a difference. Um, the bottom, you know, there's Teslas. Things go down quickly, but gets the minimum job done. Gets that one building right there. This building is so important. Right on the corner in that first layer. Um, that can make your troops walk if you don't take it out, along with these army camps next to them. Gets the important stuff taken out. Um, and from there, everything's going into the middle pretty much, which is what you want to see. Um, when in doubt, 
err on the side of having more stuff go into the middle than less. I know I've said it's effective to have witches or bowlers, a few of them walk to the outside. Typically, um, error on the side of getting your troops in the base. That's your priority. So anyway, has those first two jumps early. You don't always need to connect that second inferno tower, especially for a lower level base like this. You can let your troops kind of make their way through the wall or let your queen shoot over the wall. Either way, it tends to work out okay if you have your troops in the right place at the right time. Uh, it seems like the queen and the, and the warden always end up together for one, one reason or another. So I don't know why, but it's uh, it's a good end game uh, composition there, having those two troops next to each other, especially if you still have the queen's ability. So there's not many troops left up. There's a few witches, I think one witch, two witches at the top there. They should get that cannon taken out, and then from there the queen and the warden can fight their way through along with that witch at the bottom and get the those uh, bottom defenses taken out. So awesome attack. We'll go ahead and go times four just for sake of time because you guys know what's happening. But yeah, guys, that's the basics. You know, start on the outside, work your way in. Typically, you're at an attack attacking an entire side of a base. So town hall ten base builders don't make your bases you know squares. Try to mix up the uh, shape of the walls and stuff that can be something that can be effective also the tesla farm can be effective but in terms of deployment like i said uh, work your way in you know you can use healers uh, on each side for the funnel you can use giants but drop a few witches a few bowlers to create that funnel that's very important then drop your main group of troops up the middle two jumps typically gets the job done uh, you guys saw the spell comps so you can kind of pick and choose uh, a little bit you have a little bit of freedom as far as what spells you bring and if there's a lot of point defense drop a golem if not you don't need a golem as much so hope that all you know helped for those of you town hall 11s and for town hall 10s who want to get some advice on kind of how to defend it i tried to sprinkle in a few tips for possible defense strategies and uh yeah i should have some more defensive videos that will cover more beyond this for town hall 9 town hall 10 uh coming out this week along with some more attack strategies that were produced from this war. Good job to Dark Looters getting the win, but also a very good war to Immoral Thieves. Uh, both clans performed very well, so good job to both both groups of uh, players. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bisectatron out.